Today we're going to be looking at fractional exponents. Now, when you start thinking about fractional exponents, what you have to remember is that the laws of positive exponents still apply. We're just going to go ahead and relate them with fractions. So, before we start talking about fractional exponents, let's talk about roots, uh, square roots and cube roots of numbers. So when you look at the square root of 25, you know that the answer is 5. Why is that? Because 5 is the number you need to multiply 2 times in order to equal 25. Same thing as if you're looking for the cube root of 64. You know that the answer to that is 4 because 4 is the number you mul multiply by itself 3 times to get to 64. But what happens if you run into a number that you don't know, like the fifth root of 32 over 243? All right. Well, let's take a look. Um, we have some unknown value raised to the fifth power is going to equal 32 over 243. Now, you might not think you're a step closer, but actually you are. So now you're trying to think of what number times itself five times gets me 32. What number times itself five times gets me 243. If I don't know that answer, what I can do is make a factor tree to find the prime factorization of a number. So for example, with 32, I have 2 times 16. Then I'm going to break that down further until I get to its prime components which I see is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the 5th. I'm going to do the same thing with 243. Again, if I don't know what its prime factorization is, let's see, I know that's divisible by 3 because 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 3 is 9 and 9 is divisible by 3. And then as I move on from there, I see I have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So I get 2 to the 5th over 3 to the 5th. So now that I've simplified that, I can see that the 5th root of 32 over 243 is 2 thirds. Now, how does this tie into fractional exponents? Well, let's take a look. So I have a to the 1 half times a to the 1 half. If you remember your previous rules, that means that I have a to the 1 half plus 1 half, right? Because if you have similar bases, you add the exponents together, and 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So I can write that as a to the 1. But we don't necessarily need that one, as we've mentioned before. So that's just a. Another way I can look at this is to say I have a to the 1 half times 2. Now 2 times 1 half also gets me 1, so then I get a to the first, or simply just a. Also, if I have a to the 1 third times a to the 1 third times a to the 1 third, following my laws of exponents here, I have 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third, and that equals 1, or I have a. I also have a to the 1 third being multiplied together by itself 3 times. 3 times 1 third gets me a. So that I can see here the first law is that any time you have an exponent, as a fraction, your numerator depend is telling you how many times you're looking for that number to be multiplied by itself. Which works with um, when you have 1 as your, sorry, your numerator, and then your denominators are telling you the values, the root values. But what happens if that's not a 1? What happens if it's something like 2 thirds? Well, if we work backwards, this could have happened two different ways. You could have had a to the one third times two. 
So that's going to get you 1 third times 2 equals 2 thirds. But another way to look at it is if we think about a to the 1 third, so I'm taking this sidebar over here, we know that that can be written as the cube root of a. So then if I have the cube root of a, that value is squared. So that would be another way to write a to the 2 thirds, which brings us to our second rule involving fractional exponents. Somewhere around here. There it is. Now, what you can see is that your numerator can be um, taken as the exponent of that value, and then your denominator is the root of that number. Seems a little confusing, so maybe we should look at an example. So I'm going to evaluate 81 to the 3 fourths. So one way I could do this is to write this as the fourth root of 81 raised to the third power. So the fourth root of 81 I know is going to be 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. So then that's 3 to the third power. My answer then is 27. Now it makes sense that it's 27 because it should be lower than 81 since I am lower than 1. What if, however, I have a negative value? Here's where it gets maybe a little tricky. What needs to be negative? What needs to be positive? Well, I don't know that I can really take the negative fifth root of 32. So I'm just going to take the positive fifth root of 32 and then raise that to the negative fourth power. Now we all know that the fifth root of 32 is 2 because we did it several screens ago. Now I have 2 to the negative fourth. Now we're dealing with negative exponents. So this leaves me with 1 over 2 to the fourth. And since I am evaluating, so I'm trying to simplify as much as possible, I would rewrite this as 1 over 16 because 2 to the fourth is 16. So it does get a little more complicated because you're dealing with fractions, but remember that the rules of positive and negative indices still apply. And we will be getting plenty of practice in class, so there's no need to freak out just yet. But here's a challenge problem for you just to warm you up. What I want you to do is simplify the following and express your answer in positive exponential notation. Here's a hint. It's already in positive exponential notation, so you just have to simplify it. Good luck.